There we go. There's that red button. Hey, I'm Carrie Beck with How to Homeschool My Child, and I'm excited to be with you today. I mean, this is a really cool week. This is Holy Week or Passion Week, and some of you may go, I never really celebrated that. I, I didn't grow up knowing anything. To be honest, when I was growing up, for um, we celebrated Easter. We recognized Good Friday, the cross, and Easter, but that was it. I guess we um, celebrated... Um, or in Sunday school, we did um, Palm Sunday also. But as far as the other events leading up to Easter, I think there's a lot that we can learn. And when Steve was in seminary up in Idaho, they recognized uh, more of these events. And so I'm just going to go through a quick little calendar of um, what happens this week back in history. And then I'm going to share a tip of something that has uh, been helpful to me to be able to prepare my heart to really hear what God has to say to me. Uh, and then I'll close with a quick little story. So um, this is yesterday was Sunday. So that was Palm Sunday. And now let's move through the week very quickly, just so you have an overview. And if you join us, please feel free to leave a comment and tell us if you're going to be with family on Easter Sunday. All right. Yesterday, Palm Sunday, and that was when Jesus had his triumphal entry as a king, but also as a humble servant riding on a colt. Today is Monday. This is the day that Jesus weeps over Jerusalem, and he cleanses the temple again. Then tomorrow will be Tuesday, and that's when Judas makes his deal to betray uh, Jesus. So that's Tuesday. Wednesday, really, the Bible doesn't have a lot to say about what happened. I think Jesus was still in Bethany, but there aren't many details about what he was doing. Thursday was a busy day. Thursday back then was they were celebrating Passover, which then leads into the Lord's Supper. It was the first Lord's Supper that Jesus instituted. Then Jesus goes out to the garden and prays at the Garden of Gethsemane. And then Judas comes and betrays him and they arrest him. On Friday, the trials begin. I want to say six trials. There are a bunch of trials um, on Friday. And then we have the cross the biggest sacrifice that anyone can make. And so Jesus dies for our sins. We are, we all deserve death. We all have made at least one sin in our life. And it's only one sin that'll keep us out of heaven, out of God's family. And God says the payment is death, blood. There needs to be a blood payment. So Jesus goes on the cross, sheds his blood. He is broken for us. And they put him in the tomb. Saturday, uh, they seal the tomb and put a guard outside. And then Sunday, the greatest day of the year, is the day that Jesus conquers sin and death, and he is alive, and there's an empty tomb and everything. Now, that's just a quick synopsis of Holy Week or Passion Week, depending on how you do. Last week, I talked about you preparing your heart by looking at your heart, tending your heart, checking your heart, do a heart checkup, and then also renewing our mind. I'm not going to go through all of that. You can watch the video from last week. What I want to do is go forward a little bit further and talk about this week and how we can be growing in who we are. I don't know about you, but and I was going to grab my Bible, but it's upstairs. So God's given me his word. And when I start reading his word, there are many times my mind starts drifting and I can't remember. Or I don't know about you. I'm reading going, oh, Steve needs that verse. Oh, the kids need that. Oh, look, they need this verse. And I'm reading it thinking of all the things I need to pray about for all the other people instead of taking it to me. Because I can't change those people. And really that's between God and those people. But um, God can change me. And what I realize as I read the Bible is I'm the one with the problem. And I'm the one that needs to deal with God and my problem. So let me talk about us, me personally. And then we'll talk about kids. So. God does reveal in his word what we need to do and what our problems are. And so we need to go to God and ask God, show me what you want me to do. Um, examine me. Change me. Because I can't do it myself. Psalm 139, 23 and 24 says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Those are scary verses. Like, do, am I really honest? I really want God to search me because I know pretty much how bad it is in there. Um, but test me and know my anxious thoughts, my worried thoughts. 
see if there is anything offensive in me and lead me in the way everlasting. That's really what we're talking about. We need to go to God about us first. Then we can work with our kids and then we can pray for all those other people. But I really need to talk about this and I need to talk, find out what God wants me to do before I can try to change anyone else. Well, let's be really honest. That's crazy and impossible. We can't change anyone else. We can only change us and we need to grow in his word. So how do we do this? It is very similar. If you've ever heard me talk about teaching your kids how to think, there's a three-step process. And this is really the same thing. We need to set aside time every day to read God's word and to pray and listen to him. We need to file quickly what we learn by writing it down. And I keep a journal. This is the journal that I'm working in right now. And... I will just tell you, let me find the pages I was using. Because the stuff that I am telling you right now is stuff that God was teaching me. Um, this is the stuff about last week. Guard your heart. There's where I wrote it and some verses. And then I had a personal thing. And then right here in blue is where we talk about growing. Because I've got several topics about preparing my heart for Easter. The next one is change right here. I like colors. Um I mean, this was, this journal, well, my granddaughter gave it to me. I don't know how much they paid. But I go to Walmart and get a journal like this, and it's nice and bound for like 2 or $3, dollars two fifty or $3. I was looking for one yesterday for a gift. Um, so these are great. Write down what God's telling you and then apply quickly what we learn. And so we read, we write, and then we put it into practice. You can put it into practice yourself. You can share it with someone. Share it with your husband and let him hold you accountable. Or share it with your kids, the things that God's teaching. Now, I know not everything's appropriate to share with your children. But, you know, that would be very humbling and very transparent with your kids. And your ki I think it would open your kids' eyes. So we need to trust God for the growth in our lives. We can only grow in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not something I can do. So I go to God and I have a willing spirit for him to change me. I had some things happen this weekend and I was I woke up feeling guilty and shameful because of some things that I had uh, done. And so as I was walking this morning, I was like, okay, God, I am really honest. I cannot overcome this sin. I cannot do it, but you can. And I'm just trusting you. And I'm going to call on the name of Jesus when I have those temptations. But you got to help me remember that I'm doing it because sometimes I forget. How do we teach our kids this? How do we take this process of preparing our heart and really being honest with God and, and confessing our sins so that we are ready on Easter Sunday to truly celebrate? Well, here are some things. Number one, you can model time in the word. Model for your kids that you are spending time reading your word. My mom did this for me. I still remember coming downstairs, and if I came downstairs early for breakfast, my mom was doing one of three things. She was exercising, she was reading her Bible, or she was praying. And she still probably does all of those things first thing in the morning. But that is my memory. I knew what my mom is. I actually have followed her example. I walk in the morning, I read my Bible, and I pray first thing in the morning. So model for your kids. Share in everyday conversations what you are learning and applying. Don't just make it, a for, okay, let's sit together and read our Bible and let's talk. And then we don't talk about it all day long. Or Yeah, and don't make it such big, long lectures. God's word should just be a natural part of your everyday life. And it should just flow in our conversation. Read the Bible and pray together. I think that is important. We started our days in the morning at breakfast with family devotions. Steve would lead those family devotions, reading the Bible and praying. I would say this week, encourage your kids to do what I just suggested. Encourage them to ask God what needs changing. And then for God to examine the kids. And then I would personally, if I were their mom, meet with each child individually through the week and help them work through this process. Read Psalm 139, 23, and 24. Memorize it together this week. Search me, O oh God, and know my hearts. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Memorize that and commit as a family that we're going to do that. And you may go, well, I just don't know if I have time to meet with the kids individually. Let me close with this story. Susanna Wesley lived in the 1700s, I believe. Her husband was rector. He, he was in another world. 
she gave birth to 19 children, 19 children. Now, nine of them ended up dying at birth, but that means she still had 10 children in this home. She gave them a great education, a classical education. She did a great job as a mom. She met with each of those children, I have been told, um, individually every day. If she can meet with 10 kids every single day, surely you can meet with each of your children this week individually. How could she do that? Because she had a good relationship with um, God. I don't know if you know it, but two of her sons were John Wesley, forgot the other guy's name, Charles Wesley, the hymn writer. So two of them were, um, they went on to take a professional life in um, serving God. She was also the 25th of 25 children in her family. She knew what a large family was like. She knew that this was so important and she couldn't survive without God. So here's what she would do. When it was time for her to talk with God, she pulled her apron over her head. And the kids knew, leave mom alone. She's spending time with God. That was her own. She didn't have, a, she couldn't like go off somewhere. They were in a small house. Um, she, that was her clue to her kids, leave her alone. She's spending time with God. You see, she was modeling. She was an example of getting that together. It is said, I have read, she would pray two hours a day. That's a long time to be praying, especially if you've got 10 kids running all over the house. But she knew that that was important. And so I would encourage you, you have got to have your own relationship with God right before you're gonna be able to pour into your kids. You've got to absorb who he is and what he's doing and teaching you before you can give it to your kids. Oh, um, let me read one of Susanna's prayers that I wrote out. Listen, help me Lord to remember that religion is not to be confined to the church or closet, nor exercised only in prayer and meditation, but that everywhere I am in your presence. That's what I was saying, it's all day long. So may my every word and action have moral content. May all the happenings of my life prove useful and beneficial to me. May all things instruct me and afford me an opportunity of exercising some virtue and daily learning and growing towards your likeness. Amen. That's exactly what we're talking about. That was her prayer. That it wasn't just when she had her head under the apron, which is a part of it, but she, and it wasn't just going to church. That true religion with God, true time with God is all day long. And that she was uh, wants to be an example and make all the things going on instruct her as well. So that is really all I have to say. I will leave a quick announcement if you're watching this on Facebook tomorrow night, Tuesday night, we have our Easter Facebook party and I've got some good things. We're going to talk a little bit about this. It will be some fun stuff, but we're also going to have some serious encouragement of moms as well because we all learn from everyone. Other people probably have other ideas about how we can prepare our hearts uh, for Easter and how we can help our kids prepare their hearts. So thanks for spending time with me. I am Carrie Beck with How to Homeschool My Child. Y'all have a great day.